I figured out a few things on Klecky this weekend, and I think this will help to make your painting go a lot smoother and quicker. So this assignment is now several assignments down in the stream. It's the one that says digital coloring page, Alpha Zen handle bit. So we're gonna click on that. The first thing I'm gonna do is download my scan of my Alpha Zen handle bit. So click on the drive link and find your scan of your letter. I'm gonna click on this and then preview it just to make sure it's mine even though it's labeled with my name on it. Then I'm gonna click the download button and your computer's gonna look a little different than mine because you have a Chromebook whereas I have a laptop even though they're both laptops. Mine has a regular computer, whereas yours is a Chromebook or a netbook. So I'm going to save it on the desktop. Yours will automatically save it on your downloads folder. Then I'm going to click the back arrow to go back to Google Classroom. Close this window and click on the clicky paint tool. First thing I'm going to do is open up my file by clicking the File tab and selecting Import. Since the last thing I did was the desktop, again, yours might be in the Downloads folder, I'm going to click one time here and select Open. Make sure to always select As Image. Tap that. The first thing you're going to do is create a few layers. So click on this icon. Click the plus. Double tap on layer two. And change this to the word color. That's going to be your color layer. And rename it. Originally I had you change the blending to darken. But we're going to do things a little differently now that I figured out a better way to do this. I'm going to click the plus again, double tap on layer three, and call this one ink, and rename. So with the paintbrush tool selected, I'm going to click the second brush tool down here, which is going to give me the parameters or the settings on that brush tool. Just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to click red. And you'll notice the little plus, also called a cursor. If you move it really quickly, you can see how big the brush is. To make the brush larger, click on the right bracket tool, which is right next to the letter P, actually two keys over from the letter P on your keyboard. This will increase the size of your brush. I want the size of my brush to be about the same width as this line. And I'm just gonna very, quickly go around here and I see that it's a little bit too thick. I don't want it that thick. I'm going to reduce it by tapping the left bracket tool or key. And then I'm just going to very carefully go around this line. So what I'm doing is I'm outlining this shape. And if you make a mistake, you can erase it later. But for our purposes, I'm just going to can keep going around. I'm using the space bar to move the view around. Remember, the space bar isn't actually moving the picture. It's moving the view of what's showing in the window. If you notice, I missed a little piece right here. You have to make sure that it's completely closed. And again, when I'm doing this, I have one hand on the keyboard, my left hand, and my right hand is, in my case, using the mouse. In your case, it's probably using your finger or one of the styluses. So once I've got that area surrounded, 
I'm going to change the tool up here to the paint bucket. Here's what the settings should be. For opacity, leave it at 100. For the tolerance, I found that 15 is about the best tolerance. Leave this alone and make sure that contiguous is selected. And now when I use the paint bucket tool and I very carefully click in here, I missed, let me click it again. It painted everything that was touching inside my outline. There's a few things that are not touching exactly right. So you have to go back and make sure to paint them all. If they weren't touching these other lines, then it's not going to paint. If you don't outline this correctly, or if there's a gap in here, sometimes it'll spill over into some of these other areas and it'll do something like this. And I don't want it to do that because this is going to be a different color. So I'm going to hold the control key down and tap the letter Z. You can also click this up here to undo the last move. Then I'm going to click on my color palette, my color layer, excuse me. Then I'm going to go back to the paint bucket tool and click the brush. And I'm going to change the color. I'm holding the space bar down. Uh-oh. Happened right here that I have to fix. Before I do that, I filled in that area and I didn't want that area filled in. So I'm gonna go back to the paint bucket tool. Now here's a quick, uh, another shortcut. If you hold the alt key down on your keyboard, watch what happens to the paint bucket. It turns into the eyedropper tool. So now I can select this red color to make sure it's the right color. And then I can go back in here and paint these. So here again, I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool. Choose that blue color again. And instead of using the paint bucket tool, I like to use the paint brush. So I'm going to use the paint brush to start painting in here. Except look what I did. I painted over the red lines because I was on the wrong layer. So I'm going to undo that move. Click on the layers. Click on the color layer. And now I can paint in here and it won't paint over the red lines because I'm on a different layer. Remember also the bracket tool. The right bracket tool makes the paint brush thicker or wider. And the left one makes it smaller. So I'm using a combination of keyboard commands here. Including the space bar. If I want to get that little tiny space in there, I can make the screen bigger by pinching out making the paintbrush smaller by clicking the left bracket tool and then painting that area. I'm going to pinch back in to get it bigger. Make sure I have the paintbrush tool. And again, I'm going to make the paintbrush tool really big to cover a lot more space and a lot more area. Space bar. So the space bar, again, helps me to move the view around so that I can paint in different areas. And it's especially important when you're zoomed in like this to get those little areas that you might have missed. So I'm, again, holding the space bar down, moving the picture around to make sure I got all the areas. You can see I went outside of the area here a little bit. So with the paintbrush, selected, I'm going to click the eraser and erase that part. So here's where there's going to be a lot of back and forth from layer to layer. Make sure I have the brush selected. Make my brush smaller to fit that area. I have blue selected at the moment, so I want to be on the ink layer.
since I want this red and I'm not sure what red it is, I'm going to hold the Alt key down, which is right next to the space bar, and sample that red color. And then I can continue painting. As always, at the end of the class period, make sure to always save your file as a PSD file. The way you do that is click on File. Here's the Save button, but I want to save it as a PSD, so I'm going to click here and select PSD. Your netbook will probably automatically download that file to your downloads folder. I'm going to do a little trick here and go shift 8 dot 8 which which is an old DOS command so that I can click watch what happens to the name of the file when I click up here. It changed the name to the one I wanted. But in this case it's a PSD file. So I want to make sure to select PSD and then save the file. Then I can close the document and continue working on it tomorrow.